In the previous section, we talked about network communication. But there's another way of doing communication, which is with messaging. And in many ways, messaging is better. Um, so I'm going to be talking about that in this section here. And another thing you might want to look at is this reactivemanifesto.org website. It's going to give you more information about some of the benefits about messaging. So the request reply pattern, which is what we talked about in the previous section with network messaging or, or network communication rather, that pattern is frequently not the best pattern to use. The client may send to a busy, or you know, in other words, not idle, service instance. So it could be that there's an instance that's already busy doing work, and then the client gets, maybe through the load balancer, gets its request sent to this already busy system, and now it has to just do even more work. So that's not ideal, because there may be some other instances that are relatively idle. And of course, the client may crash or maybe just go away because of a scale down that's happening within the cluster while waiting for the service instances to reply. So you might want to consider messaging communication instead. So there are several benefits of it. First of all, it's more resource efficient. The client has, doesn't wait for the service to reply. So there's no block threads or long live locks that are happening. The service instance pulls work versus the busy server instances being pushed more work. So now, if a service is idle, it's going to go and pull more work, so the work is going to go to the idle ones, whereas the services that are busy, they're not going to be pulling more work, so they can finish doing the work that's keeping them busy. And so you end up getting better load balancing, which is a more resource efficient way to go. With messaging communication, you have a service in the cluster that gets sent messages and also is uh, talked to in order to pull messages out. So your services, the client service and the uh, server service, if you will, they don't need to have listening endpoints at all. Um, instead, you're talking to this queue service that sits within the cluster. So it needs to have endpoints, but the other services don't. So that can simplify some of the uh, service discovery and the addressing issues that we talked about in the previous section. Another thing about messaging communication is that it's more resilient. The client and the service instances, they can come and they can go and they can move around the cluster at will, that is changing their endpoints, but it doesn't really matter. The messages will stay in the queue service until they're pulled from. And so if a client pulls a message or some client pulls a message out and starts processing it, but then it goes away for some reason, then the message will go back in the queue and then it can be re-pulled out a little bit later on. So it makes things more resilient that way. Okay? If a service instance fails, another instance can go and process the message. Now this does mean that a single message could be delivered multiple times. Um, and it also means that the messages are not ordered. So this again once, mean, once again means that retry is important and item potency is important. If you set, process the same message multiple times, processing of that message must be item potent. Um, it also with a messaging communication, the client or the servers can be taken completely offline. Maybe you have a bug and you would like to take them all down while you go and fix that bug. Meanwhile, more messages might be getting queued up into the queue and they're just sitting there. Eventually, you deploy a fixed version of the service. Once it gets deployed, it starts pulling the messages from the queue and processing them. And lastly, a messaging communication can be more elastic. I talked about this earlier in the course when we talked about auto-scaling, auto how the orchestrator can monitor the queue's length periodically over time, and if the queue length is growing over time, then the orchestrator knows that it needs to scale up the number of instances. And if the queue length is getting shorter over time, then the orchestrator knows that it can scale down the number of instances.